Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast. I am your host, Susie Hunter. We've got Kale Sorbo producing today. Ba, 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 ba. No, no word yet on if he wants to talk today. He's We're still feeling it out. But he will be air horning all freaking show. All show. It's going to be a nice show. It's going to be like a tight, tight 40. Something like that. We got a lot of stuff going on here at the DNVR bar today, including, is it Friday Night Live? Friday Night Live. We've Friday. got the Broncos, the whole Broncos crew in town tonight for the first preseason game. We're going to be going live from the bar to both the internet and uh, the bar. That's awesome. Yeah, it'll That's be cool. sick. That's so fun. I love that. I can't wait till it's the Rockies offseason so we can have the Rockies turn at the Friday Night Live shows. But the Broncos one will be fun. Obviously, there's hashtag no offseason when it comes to Broncos football. But yeah, we're going to talk about Rockies baseball because we're following Allen Iverson rules here. We are not talking about practice. We are talking about actual in-season sporting events starting the Colorado Rockies and the Los Angeles Dodgers. So last night, Thursday night, was the first in a four-game set. The Rockies' second and final trip to Los Angeles this season. And Ty Block was the starter. He was incredible. He got We got six innings out of him, six innings pitched, three hits, just one earned run, two walks, one hit by pitch, uh, and two strikeouts. But... It all kind of started to unravel a little bit uh, when he gave up that homer to Max Muncy in the seventh. But listen, you can't have a great pitching performance without a good infield behind you. Everyone is talking about Ezekiel Tovar's incredible defense last night. Uh, Bud Black told MLB.com last night, Tovar, since May 1st, has arguably been the best defensive shortstop in the game. I mean, look at the numbers. He's been magnificent. And, of course, Ty Block, when speaking with MLB.com last night, too, was singing the praises of the other infielders, too. So, Mac, Trejo, told he said, quote, I can't think of a better defense ever behind me before. You guys, you have guys who should win gold gloves in all four places there. It's really fun when you've got that as a ground ball pitcher, knowing that those plays are going to get made behind you more times than not. It's a team sport. It's a team sport, folks. Um, so, yeah, it was a pretty, it was a a little bit of a little bit of a duel. We had Clayton Kershaw on the mound for the for the Dodgers. The eighth inning is kind of where the wheels came off um, for for the Rockies. Um, got a little traffic on the bases. A walk from Mac, Max Muncy ended up scoring. So yeah, Rockies lost two one, but we did get a mwah, chef's kiss home run from Elihiris Montero. And I like to say, whenever El Harris Montero hits a home run, the Rockies win the trade a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Just a little. It's nice. I got a chuckle out of Kale. That means everything to me. Um, Nathan in the comments saying, Ty Block transformed into Cy Block last night. I love that. We'd love some wordplay. Ty Block's a good dude. He's a nice young man. Um, uh, Jerks and Profar was maybe not a nice young man last night, but I think he was in the right. So this was captured on TikTok last night. Jerks and Profar was getting heckled out in the outfield. He's in like a prime spot to be heckled. Every outfielder knows that. But he he kind of motioned to the person heckling him that the person heckling him was maybe a little bit large. Um, do we have that video, Kale? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so we're going to show this here on our DNVR Sports YouTube channel. We love a good TikTok video, a good TikTok moment. So, yeah, we can see Dodgers fans just being like their regular rowdy selves. Yelling at some outfielders as Jerkson Profar starts walking to his spot. He looks at the guy who's heckling him. He motions that he's maybe fat. Everyone loves it. Everyone loses their mind. So I posed this question on Twitter. This is what I have been wondering. Is anything off limits? Is any is anything or is everything fair game rather in the heckler player interaction? Most people that I kind of like quickly unofficially polled on Twitter were honestly in support of it um uh, oh my gosh you know i need to actually pull up some of these tweets because these are these are good uh brandon 
commented and said, hard to tell. I once heckled Reese Hoskins at a double A game and he proceeded to crush a homer. I haven't done it since. I was like, yeah, you, you deserved that. You deserved that. To be fair, I think like heckling is part of Philly's training because Philly fans are like actually the most insane fans on the face of the earth. That's true. That's true. Kale, where, what do you think? Do you think it's fair for Jerks and Profar to call a heckler overweight? I don't know. I'm like kind of anti body shaming in all mm. in all like yeah. scenarios. Like I think it's fine to clap back, but maybe like find a different way to clap back. Mm-hmm. But I you know don't what? know. That's, that's like my opinion on that's things. That's a fair opinion. That's a fair opinion. I I wish I was out in LA right now so I could ask him. <laughs> <laughs> so I can ask him what was really going on out there. Yeah, totally. Like, I'd I mean, like maybe to know he said something. Story. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I maybe mean, that dude said something awful that we couldn't hear. Yeah, totally. And then everything, probably fair game. But yeah. I'm just, in general, against body shaming. You know what, Kale? That's a great take. That's a good takes, Kale, over here. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, so, yeah, chime in if you're listening to us, if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, let me know. Let me know how far is too far when it comes to players clapping back at hecklers, hecklers saying stuff to players, vice versa. Let me know your opinion. Um, we, okay, we all know we got some great prospects going on in the Rocky system right now. We checked in with Jeff Dooley the other day, and he updated us on the new guys and the guys who moved up to triple a but of course it was a great conversation with jeff we haven't had haven't had him on the show in a while but kale are we ready to roll this interview all right here it is our convo with jeff dooley joining the pod now our good friend jeff dooley joining us from hartford at duncan park jeff how are you doing doing well susie always good when i'm talking to you my friends Always. Oh, my gosh. Likewise. Likewise. Also, I'm still getting used to calling it Duncan Park as opposed to Duncan Donuts Park. Old habits die hard. But we have to talk about you guys have had some great talent out in Hartford lately. One of the most recently um, that I know you guys got to spend a bunch of time with Hunter Goodman got the call up to triple A. But uh, tell us about what you've seen from him. And I guess I'm sure you're so excited that he's been called up. Yeah, really well-deserving honor for him. I mean, I, I've been waiting for that phone call to ring the last month or so just because I think he's done just about everything that he can do in this league. Uh, for a while, was leading the league, and I think batting and home runs and RBIs and became the all-time single-season home run and RBI king in Yard Goats history uh, just last week. So we're thrilled for him. He is someone that works extremely hard. And Susie, the really cool thing is that this is not the first time that this has happened. Last year, he was like second or third in all of major league, uh, minor league baseball and home runs and, and RBIs. And he just is a guy that he he succeeds with the game on the line and in pressure situations with guys in scoring position. He drives and runs. And, you know, hopefully he goes up to Albuquerque and does well. And we get to see him in Denver real soon because he has a chance to be pretty good. I was going to say, he's already doing really well because his first day in Albuquerque, grand freaking slam. So that's something we love to see, for sure. Yeah, I'm not shocked at all because he, he's a guy that drives the ball over the fence. He had so many home runs here, so many big hits, and he hits these line drive bullets. I mean, he, he, as they say with a lot of great hitters, that it ball sounds differently off their bat. That's the that's Hunter Goodman. He's got that swing where when you know he got when you know he's got one, you just you when he barrels it up, it go a long, long way. So we're thrilled, and hopefully it's not too long before he's suiting up in uh, in Colorado Rockies gear. Yeah, hopefully not too long. You never know with uh, all the things happening up here in Denver. But uh, I also want to talk about Victor Vodnik. He's a guy that we have wanted to know a lot more about since he came over from the Braves organization in the Pierce Johnson trade. You guys got to see him for a little bit before he also got called up to AAA. Tell us what you saw from him in his brief stint as a yard goat. Just an electric fastball. He throws 100 miles an hour. The last ever pitch he threw at Duncan Park as a yard goat was a 100 mile an hour fastball to end the game on Sunday. Uh, got a strike three uh, swing and a miss uh, against the Reading Fight and Phil. So he's a really good kid. I had a chance to spend some time with him, although it was limited time. Um, you know, it was a little bit surprised, I think, by the trade because. You know, you're a top prospect with the Braves, but he told me that, listen, I, I felt a little bit like I was, you know, just kind of a number with that organization where here I, I 
put up some numbers, and next thing you know, I may get promoted. And sure enough, after three games, he's in Albuquerque. And again, I would not be shocked if he has, at some point has a chance to go up there. Talking to some scouts that were recently following us, they said that right now his fastball is major league ready. Once he gets some of that secondary stuff over um, consistently, that's when he'll take that next step to get to the big leagues. His slider is really good, but for them, just isn't consistently in the strike zone enough. So once he gets that slider over, uh, the fastball's already done enough damage where, you know, it's a major league fastball. He's going to be, uh, I think, probably a late inning guy when he gets to Denver. Listen, we, you know that we need arms. So exciting that he's doing well. Excited that he's happy in this organization. Um, excited that he is just one step closer to possibly playing for the Rockies. Now, you guys said goodbye to some prospects, but said hello to some new prospects. Sterling Thompson, now a yard goat. Um, what are you liking from him? Well, he just played one game, so he had his debut with the Goats uh, last night in Portland. And, uh, you know, he'll be an everyday guy, though. He's an infielder, comes with a lot of hype. He's the number nine prospect in the Rockies organization, a number one pick. He was the 31st overall pick last year. He's one of six first-round picks on the Yard Goats roster now. So how cool is that? You get to come to a Goats game and see six first-round picks, and a couple of them from last year's draft. So he's certainly an exciting player, played collegiately at a high level at the University of Florida, had a stellar college career with the Gators. And I'm just excited that he's going to be an everyday guy with the Yard Goats. And again, it's only been a game, um, so we'll, we'll see. This is a gigantic adjustment, as we often talk about Susie going from a high A to double A. So um, I'm not going to say that he's going to come in, you know, hit 350 the, the final, you know, month and a half of the season. But um, I'm really excited that he's, uh, he's a GOAT right now for sure. Yeah, that's not how it works, but we will keep an eye on him. We know Double A's crazy. That's why we love checking in with you. You guys have some really cool stuff going on this weekend, though, because there is a reason why you are in Hartford while the team is in Portland. This is very unusual, but a big event is happening this weekend, right? Yeah, I don't like to miss that Portland trip because I love lobsters, but I had to send my <laughs> broadcast partner, Dan Lavallo, up. I'm going to go up on Saturday, but yeah, we, we have a big week, Susie, and thanks for asking. It's uh, MLB, Major League Baseball's Home Run Derby X. They did this in London. They did this in Seoul for the first time ever in the United States of America. It's at Duncan Park in Hartford. So we're thrilled. It's, such, you know, I, I, it's just so great that they, they chose the Yard Goats and Duncan Park and our community and our fans and our media. This will be a fun event. So tomorrow is basically the players that registered that got the invite to the tryout will be trying out uh, tomorrow in terms of a competition. It's basically a three-on-three -three home run derby format. And the players that um, they'll show what they can do. And we have four major league veteran type of guys that are called ambassadors. And they're going to have a draft, including Nick Swisher, Johnny Gomes, Trot Nixon, Jake Arrieta. So there'll be some kind of star power at Duncan Park tomorrow. And they're going to have a draft and pick the teams. And they'll be the captains of those teams. And then the teams playing on Friday will have a chance to um, not only play for some cash, but also for some donations to charity as well. The event actually is sold out here in Hartford. So this would be a lot of fun. Very similar to, I think, the uh, Home Run Derby at the Major League All-Star Game. Some of the sets they've told me, the same sets that actually they just used in Seattle at the All-Star Game. So that'll be really cool. Um, but the it's actually going to be a stage. The pitcher is actually going to be set up in short, like just be on second base on a stage. And the hitter will be on a stage. Uh, between first and second base, and they'll be hitting balls to left field. So I can't wait to see the setup. I've seen photos of it, but but I'm excited that I get the opportunity to announce it on, on Friday night. Oh, my gosh. I did not realize we were rearranging the whole field for this, but this is so interesting. Uh, I can't wait to see all of your coverage of it. This What an honor for Hartford also. Super fun. Like you guys needed more star power, though, right? <laughs> we're really fortunate, as you know, Susan. We appreciate all the support. Oh, my gosh. Jeff Dooley, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Have a great weekend. We will definitely talk to you soon. All right. Do it. Thanks, Susie. You know what? I would put some good money on Home, Home Run Derby X being a pretty great event. 
I don't think there's a line for that on Bet365, though. Bet365, um, they have pioneered live in-game betting. And today, Bet365 offers the widest range of games and markets available for live in-game betting. Um, they've got more than 80 million users worldwide, and they're a proud partner of the Colorado Rockies. So uh, here's something I always love. They've got a great boost situation. You can get a better price on chosen markets for select games with Bet365 boosts or Bet365 super boosts. And uh, it's even better when you bet on MLB games with Bet365 because they have the baseball early payout offer. If you're a w- or you are a winner rather, if your team goes five runs ahead with an instant payout parlay and same game parlay selections will be marked as winners. So uh, the way to get in on this action, download the app and use code DNVR365 when you sign up. You must be 21 or older and physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. And if you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, have them call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. And uh, who else do we want to talk about? Bagus and Shanker! Bagus and Shanker! Our good friends who are helping uh, people who have been hurt in Colorado. They've been doing it for a long time, too. More than 25 years. And Bacchus and Shanker wins for Colorado families. And the most incredible part is that it's totally free until they win money in your case. No upfront fee to speak to someone about your case. No fee while they work on it. No fee unless you are getting money with a win and they've done it a lot to the tune of more than a billion dollars for their clients and they've got neighborhood offices all over the state including denver aurora anglewood and fort collins and you know that Bacchus and shanker has the strength and power to win your case with more than 30 lawyers and a hundred staff so Bacchus and shanker they help with all kinds of injury cases where you weren't at fault car accidents motorcycle rideshare pedestrians trucks You name it, they can even help you if you're injured at work. So give them a call at 222-2222, the easiest phone number to remember. Find out if you have a case for free because Bacchus and Shanker wins. Um, All right, so we've got some Rockies news that we want to talk about. This is something that kind of just popped up on Twitter a little bit ago. Uh, When I showed Kale, he like actually literally face palmed. Yeah. Okay. So more uh, Marvin Freeman posted on Twitter that apparently the Rockies invited him to these 30th um, anniversary celebrations, but only if he paid for his flight and hotel accommodation. So this is kind of crazy. Um, If this is true, this is wild. But uh, Marvin Freeman. um, Yeah. Like the best ERA for a single season in Rockies history and he has to pay for his own hotel. I hope this isn't true. My goodness. This is wild. Hate it. Hate to see it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I just need to chime in here. This is like, ch- such please, a, ca- this Kale, is such a ridiculous, in. like this is like one of the best pitchers in your franchise history. And it is like legitimately stunning to me that they can't even, they're billionaires and they're not going to pay for a flight in a hotel. Anyways, just like such a second class organization thing to do. And uh, I wish I was surprised, but I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I guess like, I guess I don't really know the inner workings of how things like this work. I mean, do teams usually pay for every single person to come and visit Colorado? I I mean, I I I actually don't know. I don't know what the industry standard is, but like, I don't know. It would be surprised. Like if you're inviting someone out, Mm -hmm. I think it's like. I don't know. Although, like, when my friends invite me out, like, to visit them in other cities, they're not like, okay, I'll pay for your flight. Are your friends billionaires? No. (laughs) There we go. Um, Yeah, I'm looking forward to finding out a little more about what what happened here. Oh, James in the comments. Always good to catch a Friday night Susie party cast. This is a party cast. I have no um, Breck brew with me. I just have this, like, big-ass mineral water. Cause I'm a hydrated queen. 
Um, all right, we have some like happier Rockies news that we can get into. One year ago today, Kale, you probably remember this. One year ago today was when Witten Bernard got the news that he was being called up to the majors, and that was the day he called his mom. And the video of that went viral the next day. But this is, I, I this is, this was the start of Witten Bernard's major league career one year ago today. So fun. That's awesome. Congrats to him. Yeah. Um, oh, James in the comments. We'll, we'll bring it back to James. Thanks for paying attention. I know of podcasters who always pay, always pay for guests, flights and hotels. We don't, I don't do that. <laughs> <I> don't. <laughs> Poor Christian doesn't even get gas money when he comes in. <laughs> Yeah, but he's married to someone who works here, so this it's is, a little bit different. It's a little different. It's a little different. <laughs> um, uh, if uh, Christian's agent is listening, we're probably toast. He's probably never coming back on. <laughs> does Christian have an agent? He probably does. Probably. Yeah, he's I think like he a does. broadcaster. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> His agent's going to call my agent. They're going to get into a big fight. Oh, it's going to be great. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know what? Let's talk about the isotopes. Speaking of Witten Bernard, who is once again an isotope. But last night, the isotopes lost 15 to 1 to Round Rock Express. Uh, the Topes have lost five in a row. So that's not fun. Um, and also, isotopes pitchers hit four different Round Rock batters. It's a new season high. A new record. Not the kind of record we, we want to see. It's also the ninth double-digit loss they've had this season. But this is something that I heard that was happening at their stadium last night. Um, apparently, the DJ at the ballpark was playing music between every single pitch. And, uh, like, they weren't even, like, cutting the music off when the pitcher started his delivery. So, like, batters, you know, would naturally want to call a timeout because you can't have music playing when someone's trying to hit a baseball, the hardest thing to do in all of sports. Um, but you can't call more than one timeout. So this this sounds messy. I definitely want to talk to some more dudes who were down there. But that doesn't sound fair. That does not sound fair to me. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. And especially looking at the score because they lost by so much. We got a... Um, Round Rock, I'm watching you. Uh, Jerry the Bronco, Witten Bernard will become the Rockies' base running coach in 13 years. Hey, you know, I wouldn't mind that. The organization loves him. I think he loves us back. I don't think any fan base loves Witten Bernard as much as the Rockies organization does. No, but that makes sense. He's, like, in our organization. Yeah. But, like, you know, he went to the Toronto organization, and, it, like, it just wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. Yeah, that's fair. It's fair. It's fair. Um, uh, also in the isotopes realm, uh, Sean Bouchard is continuing his rehab assignment. He has been with Albuquerque. This is his last night was his third rehab game with the isotopes. He went 0 for 2 with two walks. Uh, but over those rehab games, Bouchard's been 2 for 9 with two RBI. So we're keeping an eye on Sean Bouchard. This is what rehab assignments are for. Okay, also, hello. The comments are popping today. Justin, with the season being lost, I'm all for Winton being called back up. The season is low-key lost right now. It's, it's, it's not the best season. Why not bring Winton back up? But also, like, you know, so many other – there's a lot of great isotopes right now. A lot of deserving guys. Let's, real fast, talk about our friends – at Shady Rays. Um, I, ever since I got these sunglasses, these are my favorite Shady Rays. I've worn them every single day. I'm obsessed with these. I think these are absolutely my vibe. Shady Rays, an independent sunglass company, um, and they have been making everyone here at DNVR look fly as hell for, for a while now, but they offer a world-class product that is just as good as any expensive designer pair we've ever worn. Durable frames, great optics, these polarized lenses, absolutely incredible. Even better, they have the most insane protection plan in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses backed by that lost and broken replacement. So if you lose your pair, you break your pair, even the first minute you have them, they will send you a brand new pair. Absolutely no questions asked. So you can wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you make that purchase. And you can shop their whole collection online at ShadyRays.com, or you can head to the Park Meadows Mall. You can see them in person, try them on yourself, get a good feel for it. 
And if you buy them and you don't necessarily love them or you want something different, you can exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. So there's just no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. So here's the deal exclusive for our listeners. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code DNVR for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. So try for yourself the shades rated five stars by more than 250,000 people. Um, I definitely might need to wear some Shady Rays after hitting the turbo joint. From Kind Love. Kind Love is so excited to be the official partner of DNVR. They're a local brand. We're a local brand. All these local brands just love each other. We love Kind Love Cannabis and always get a consistent, great experience from their whole line of products. They've got incredible stuff. We always talk about the Turbo Joint. The Turbo Joint be turboing. Do you have any comments on the Turbo Joint, Kale? I love the Turbo <laughs> Joint. That's my only comment. <laughs> It's true. I know. Turbo joints be turboing. Uh, kind Love is one of the first dispensaries here in Colorado. They've been around since 2010, which, believe it or not, is 13 years ago. If you um, are doing math on it, if you're keeping track, keeping count. They are known for cultivating some of the highest quality cannabis in the state, authentic genetics, patient grow techniques, and it's one of the highest quality brands you're going to find in Colorado. And it's fully integrated seed to sale. That's basically like the farm to table of weed. And they recently launched the game changing new product, the Turbo Core. It is a toothpick sized stick. It's 100 milligrams of full spectrum cannabis concentrate. You can... uh, Put that thing into a joint, into a blunt, into a cigarette. It's going to instantly infuse it. It's also vegan, which is great. I know a lot of vegans who are a big fan of that. But you can do the Turbo Core. They also have the pre-roll line of Turbo Joints using the same exact technology. It's Turbo turbo Joints be turboing. We all know it. They better make that their slogan. Like, I think they should. Um, But yeah, visit their stores. Uh, They've got one in North Denver. They've got one in Cherry Creek. Mention DNVR and you're going to get the DNVR exclusive discount. 25% off all Kind Love flower, pre-rolls, and their whole Turbo Joint line. So you can visit their website at kindlove.com. So you can, you know, take a little look at the selection. Use that code DNVR for online ordering too. And uh, take a look at their full extensive menu. We, um, uh, all right, I'm looking at the comments. Um, uh, I am not sure which specific interview Jerry's talking about. So if you can clarify, that would be amazing. We are going to talk about some baseball news. Um, uh, one of the biggest stories in baseball this week, Michael Lorenzen threw a no hitter at his citizens bank park debut. He was recently traded, um, from the Tigers to the Phillies ahead of the All-Star break. So this was his first outing, his first appearance at Citizens Bank Park for the Phillies. Um, he So he struck out five. He walked four. He threw 124 pitches. So that's actually the highest pitch count of any pitcher this season. Um, his previous career high was 107 pitches through five innings as a rookie with the Reds. That's how the hell do you throw 107 pitches through five innings? That's so crazy. So crazy. Um, uh, I didn't realize this. I saw this on the Sports Illustrated article. Since 2020, only 11 pitchers have thrown more than 120 pitches. This like this kind of stuff does not happen anymore. We do not see these crazy pitch counts. But um, a fun fact, though, that I didn't even realize Um, Michael Lorenzen was the only all-star to get traded this season. The only one. Yeah, that's kind of wild, especially for, uh, yeah, that is interesting and not typical. Very strange. I mean, I figured, I kind of thought like Elias Diaz would end up somewhere, but sometimes the Rockies are hoarders. Sometimes they're hoarders. Uh, We just saw Michael Lorenzen here in Colorado. He pitched against the Rockies at Coors Field on June 20th. He allowed five runs on seven hits. Through five innings, he walked one, he struck out four, uh, but it was the it was the most runs that he had allowed since allowing six in game two of a doubleheader on June 14th. So maybe that was not like the best week for him, 
but kind of crazy kind of crazy uh, th- whenever i love no hitters because it's like always someone so random that you wouldn't expect except for when it was abaldo amenez and he was having like the best season of his career that's true everyone like i mean you don't expect a no hitter but no one was like oh this is this guy you know no no that was he's the exception not the rule that's fair that's but i'm fair. thinking like domingo herman's like perfect game it was like him yeah, yeah, that's him? true. He gave up like 30 runs last game. <laughs> he's struggling. He's having a tough year. It's okay. I hope he he's figures always it. got like, but like he'll always have that memory, you know, like a no hitter is like something that like you get to like tell your grandkids about, you know, which yeah. is super cool. Super cool. Super cool. I know people get so mad when I talk about the Phillies too much on this podcast, but you have to talk about Michael Lorenzen throwing a no hitter and also getting to that pitch count because we don't see this kind of stuff anymore. We simply don't. I've never seen a no-hitter in person. I was actually at the Abaldo game. Oh, my God. How old were you? Uh, 11. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. <sighs> Adorable. Yeah. A little kale. Yeah, a little kale. Did you have uh, facial hair yet? Definitely not. <laughs> uh, definitely not. I was a little toe-headed blonde boy. <laughs> oh. Uh, James in the comment, I was shocked when Randy Johnson threw a no-no. Sarcastic. It was it's a sarcastic comment. Oh, man. Randy Johnson. Enemy to birds everywhere. <laughs> Have you seen his photography logo? Yes! It's amazing. It's like, like an upside down. It's like an upside down, like exploding bird. Yes. It's amazing. So great. I, I love that he has gotten into photography as like his second he's career. He's like really good at it. He's so good. And yeah, he's just it's like amazing. doing like NFL games. Yep. <laughs> he's just a sports photographer. That's it's like what so he does dope. now. I love it. I love it. Baseball is like so stupid sometimes. It's like not even real. This is everything's hilarious. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about. Oh, we're like a half hour into the show. I know you got to set up for Broncos Live, so we're gonna start wrapping this thing up. We've still got three more games in LA to talk about um, tonight at eight ten Mountain Time. Lefty Austin Gomber up against righty Lance Lynn, who is a Dodger now. It's still really weird to see that name on a Dodgers roster, but I will. Uh, And then Saturday, also an 8-10 Mountain Time game, Peter Lambert versus righty Tony Gonsolin. And then Sunday, we see Chris Flexen again up against Julio Urias. So uh, that'll be, we've got a weekend. We've got a weekend of Dodgers baseball. Um, uh, I hope uh, Jerks and Profar heckles some more Dodgers fans because they deserve it. But maybe get more creative. He could go, he could try a different bit. He could try a different bit. Um, we are going to listen. We're going to keep you updated on everything going on with the Colorado Rockies at DNVR underscore Rockies. Stay tuned on the DNVR Sports YouTube channel because the Broncos are going to be well, the Broncos. Our Broncos beat is going to be live downstairs at the bar. It's going to be so fun. Come through if you're around. If you're around town, you got like an hour until the show starts and you can meet everyone and it's going to be, it's going to be so fun. So stay stay tuned for that. Kale, where can we follow you on social media? I'm at Kale Sorbo, Kale with two L's on Twitter and at Blue Eyes with a Backpack on Instagram. So appropriate. Uh, you can find me at the Susie Hunter on all platforms. Patrick and I will be back in studio on Sunday post game after that 210 Mountain Time game out in LA. Uh, so it'll be good to get the gang back together. But Kale, you know what? You know what I like to say about closing out a show? What do they say, Susie? You know, I just say there's there's no way to know how to do it. So I'll just say see you later. Talk to you on Sunday on the DNVR Sports YouTube channel. <laughs>